Hello everybody, Jay Barino here, welcome back. Starting a new custom campaign showcase for StarCraft II. This is Noir Ascension. It is the third campaign in a trilogy of campaigns by Edriano. And this takes place after the end of StarCraft II. The first two campaigns, I would have to go and refresh my memory, but I do know there was a Purifier War, where the Purifiers essentially went rogue. Uh, and I do remember that High Lord Alarak died, basically, to kill the, the final core of the purifiers, so now that war has ended. I think there's a little synopsis here on the mission launch that we can check out. So we played Noor Automata and then Noor Evolution. I believe that this was inspired by Nier Automata, which is all about a post-apocalyptic uh, robot world. So, I, again, the whole purifier uh, war sort of makes sense, except in this case, we did beat them. Let's check this out. With High Lord Alarak's death in the first year of the Purifier's War, First Ascendant Janara ascended to the throne and became High Lord. But on the second year of the war, Janara's First Ascendant, Ruwaka, betrayed her and left her to die at the hand of the Purifier's Titans. Not long after Ruwaka ascended the throne and became High Lord, not long after Ruwaka ascended the throne and became High Lord, three months passed since the final events of Noor Automata. Upon announcement that the war is over, the Eradicator Bayar left the ACC to embark on a journey to the Great Unknown. Okay, well, I suppose, well, let's check the credits, just to sort of get started here, we can take a look. I see a lot of familiar names in here, including myself. <laughs> but a lot of folks, uh, model creators as well, and uh, the icon creators, again, a lot of familiar names from, from the Master community that are still around and kicking. Bassett X, Halt Manable as well, helpful with feedback and such, made, and have made their own campaigns. All right, so let's get started. Let's let's watch. We'll do the memory and the prologue. The prologue and the epilogue are typically playable, so I'm, I'm assuming that the memory is a cinematic, and then the prologue is going to be playable. So let's uh, we'll do that for today. Forbidden truth. I do like Adriano's mission launchers. They're quite nice. It just takes me all the way back to the days of Crimson Moon, the first custom campaign I ever played with, which had just had a nice and crispy, crispy, <laughs> nice and crisp uh, mission launcher, and. Uh, those, are, I think, are always excellent choices to add to your campaigns, and it just keeps things centralized and just nice and presentable. So here we go. Malash. So Adriano has a knack for making very challenging and precise micro-encounters. And that's those are the maps that I've tended to enjoy quite a bit. We'll see what the majority of this campaign holds. Planet Slain, undisclosed location many years ago. Well, the, the location is Slain. I guess where on Slain. I shouldn't be such a smartass. Malash? Hello, Janara. Janara's gotten some upgrades. She's looking dope. You should call Mother. It breaks her heart that you never call. I will. So in this in this universe, Janara is the daughter of Malash? We should really stop meeting like this if others find out about us. This is the last time. After this, all of our meetings would be strictly business, strictly professional.
What do you want? Tomorrow you will fight him in the Rakshir, will you not? If you are here only to beg for his life... I am here to tell you that tomorrow I will not declare for him. Jinara looks like a steel ronin from Red Alert 3. I am going to declare for you. If this is one of your tricks... She might be his sister? It's either sister or daughter, because she said she, he needs to call mother. So he, she's either saying, hey, call your wife, or call our mom. I'm not really sure. He is a fool. He believes his subordinates would declare for him. That he would have the strength to challenge you. He is wrong. <laughs> womp womp. They will betray him, for I know them far too well. Even if they declare for him, even if I declare for him. Your forces would crush us easily. Him and everyone who stand by his side would die. Good to know that you are at the very least main you at least maintain your cleverness and cunningness. Are there eye holes in that in that thing, Malesh? I am pregnant. What is happening? There's a child living and growing inside me. Ah, the forever debate about Protoss reproduction. Have at it, comments! Should I die, this unborn child will also die with me. That I do not want. Does he know? No, and he will never know. So it's like, she's related to Malash, but she's in love with Alarak, and they're they're banging, and she's she's got his baby? How do I know I can trust you? How do I know the child will not come from my head one day? When he is strong enough to be without his mother, I will take him to the face smiths. He'll be raised and live as one. Oh, as a face smith. Got it. You will never see him in the Rakshir. And Ruwaka? Ruwaka is a true believer. He will stand and die by his side. Yeah, she looks like a steel ronin mixed with Maiev from Warcraft 3. Should he survive? Do what you want with him. I care not. This child is all that matters.
Okay. Interesting. Uh, this is not how I would expect these two characters to behave. Also, it's odd subject matter to include, you know, Protoss reproduction in children. But, uh, you know, it is... It is what it is. This is something we see in, in Adriano's campaigns, again, which is an inclusion of, of subject matter material into into StarCraft-related lore that we usually don't see. I'm not saying you, you can't do it. I'm just saying it's, it's a little strange sometimes. But, you know, it sets us up for a, a story that will take us through uh, the campaign. I could talk more about this uh, at the end, but for now we should just head back to the menu and we can start the next mission, or the first mission for that matter, the prologue, if you will. If you're still watching, we got some gameplay coming up for you too, don't you worry. We're here for the story, we're here for the, the gameplay. It's your decision, really. You're the viewers. It's your video. Alright, prologue, homecoming. Okay, we have like a human looking Jannara here. That is definitely an Eldar model from uh, Warhammer 40k, if I've ever seen one. I always believe that death is a fate better than life, for you will be reunited with lost loved ones. Well, how do you know that? But we will never meet again, my friend, for I have a feeling that your god might object to me visiting you in heaven. I hate you for leaving me. Your troops are vulnerable while frozen. Attack after the snowstorm and retreat before it begins. Uh, we're gonna stick to normal. Not casual. Normal. Planet IC3B3R6. Farseer Elinara's carrier. High above orbit. Approximately 9.31 a.m. local time. Farseer, we have arrived. It certainly seems like this campaign is going to be all about the Taldarim in some way. Are we certain the Eradicator is here, Farseer? According to our ACC intel, she should be. Okay, so it is supposed to be a person. It, it's a human. It's not, a, it's, it's not supposed to be a Protoss that strangely has a mouth. This is a human, because it's the ACC. If our intel is correct, Bay R is somewhere on the North Pole. Or wasn't it Ben R? Ben R was the one I was thinking about earlier. But our sensors detected a huge snowstorm raging there. The snowstorm could compromise our warp ability and navigation system. It would be wise to find other ways to reach the planet's surface, Farseer. Unless we want to risk instant death by being warped into solid ice. Well, that'd be a, a kind of a cool way to go, I don't know. Perhaps not. Our sensors have just detected a small landing platform. We could use the platform to warp our troops safely to the planet's surface. Could be a trap, Farseer. Do we risk it? Prepare a team. One that's big enough to withstand an ambush. But also small enough to move swiftly through the storm. It is suspicious that this character looks very much like Jannara. We leave in one hour. Is this like, maybe it's like Jannara in disguise, because apparently Jannara's been usurped. The ACC is a, a coalition of Terran and Protoss to fight back against the Purifiers, by the way. Planet IC3B3R6, North Pole, approximately one hour later.
It's a platform. There we go. Okay. <laughs> It does feel like pretty much everything in the in the cutscenes is very drawn out. Very, they could be maybe a little more concise. Just very, very long periods of time between every action that's happening. But we are getting the scene set properly here. Wow, okay, yeah, that was that was a little too lengthy. That's there my feedback there. Time. So we've got Eleonora, stay sharp and be ready for anything. The reason I brought up the ACC and how it was, uh, I think the Zerg were involved too, is that uh, that's why it's a human and she's working with the Tal'Darim. Adopted daughter of former High Lord of the Tal'Darim, Jinara. Ah, born a Terran but was raised from childhood as a Tal'Darim. An excellent close-ranged fighter with many abilities, wielding the Spear of the Storm. And is a psionic by nature. We also don't know what happened to Jannara's actual child. And that's why she's dressed like Jannara. Adriana allies. presents. Shoots a charged bolt towards target. 200 straight damage. Creates a lightning storm. 5 seconds. 100 damage. Up to 100 damage. To all units in the target area. And she can, and she can detect. Okay. Shield restore is nice. We can also use the Blood Hunters to go and scout a little bit. So like I had said, Adriano has a really, really strong knack for creating, I think, really good micro missions. Uh, they're very tough and require reloads, so we'll just be quick saving a lot, as I just did twice. Ursadon, we have to seal their cave quick before they overwhelm us. Looks like they're trying to get into position to get around us. What we can do is take a blood hunter up here to attack the to attack the rocks. The Ursodon luckily are not really doing much damage. So we can we can hold this down no problem. I like the shield restore. That's quite nice. We can use that in clever ways, I suppose. It's just on a cooldown. We stand with our allies. seriously after every encounter I will be saving. Giant Ursodon, be careful, Farseer. We must form a plan. That giant beast can sense body yes. heat, so it's a detector. Oh, okay, that's got a pretty long charge up. Pretty long. We blood hunters will be visible to them. There is much to be done. There is little time. Okay, so she's just straight up melee. That's fine. Let's charge up her, her Q again. Again, it's energy based, but that's okay. The energy regen is okay. It's not it's not great, but it's not it's not super short or anything. Yes. Let's just throw down the storm here. Oh, who has... Oh, Void Stasis. Heck yeah. I guess it technically counts as a... As a building. It must count as a building because it could detect. I'm not really sure. That doesn't make much sense. I mean, units can detect, you know, ravens, overseers, etc., etc. Okay. Well, I suppose we could use this. We could also min-max a little bit and leave this on the ground. But uh, I'm fine. I'm fine picking it up there. And I was comfortable using those abilities there because I knew that we were relatively early in, on in the mission, so we would have time to get our energy back. But like on boss fights, for example, you need to use all of your abilities very precisely. Be on alert, Farseer. Our sensors detect a storm is heading our way now. There is little time. Niraz Gulio. Is there something down here maybe we can see? It is my honor. Five minutes until the snowstorm. So obviously we don't want to be engaging anything if the snowstorm is about to hit. There are four caves to seal. And we have to we reach the outpost. We must form a plan. What we do is we lure the little ones to us. There is much to be done. Okay, let's yes. take these out. Again, the big one is a is a concern to me. Get one blood hunter down here to attack this one. I'm, I'm, tra I'm, tra I'm trapped. God damn it. Well, that was a bummer. That was a bummer. I uh, see. Like I could reload that. You know, one votary down isn't the end of the world, but you know they do a lot of damage. 
I had the right idea. Uh, you, you void stasis and then you run and you seal the cave, right? But, uh... There is much to be done. I mucked it up a little bit. Well, let's just keep going. Yes. I, I think the blood hunters are the most important units we have here. The votaries, if they die, they die. Yes. We can always rewind. Man, see, look how much damage these do. Seems like they're they're tearing through these. Though, I mean, I think my hero is also hitting these units. Here, just go ahead and get, use your shield what recharge your here. We must form a plan. We stand with our allies. Uh, before we break the rocks, let's head up here. Bonfire unlock. This place. I know this from a dream. Nice little Dark Souls reference there. What I don't know is if that's like... My wounds, they're healing each time I stand close enough to that bonfire. Yeah, okay, so it actually has a it actually has a gameplay impact this time. It, they were In the past, they were just Easter eggs. Now you can actually get... You can get HP back. Increases health regeneration. That's cool. That's nice that that actually, you know, it actually benefits us. We must form a plan. Uh, we could just scout again with the Blood Hunters. As long as there isn't a Matriarch nearby, then we just run the Blood Hunter in and do this. Yes. Uh, again, only the Matriarchs are really doing a lot of damage, so I'm pretty sure we could just use our... our hero to casually kill these things. Using the, the shield restore in advance a little bit. Okay, so that's three of four. I don't need that, so again, we can always backtrack to it. Same with the bonfire. Should we need healing, we could go back to the bonfire. Yes. So Adriano definitely expects you to to backtrack if necessary. You are expected to do that. We want my hero to tank this, please. Or let's turn this off. Right, no problem. There is little time. And again, I think Adriano typically expects you to backtrack and use this. There That's why it's there. So, again, the yes. the quality of life of not having to backtrack to heal is not. That's not what these campaigns are really about. <laughs> They're, you know, these these uh these like uh, mini micro missions are like little challenges and consider it as all one big piece. You know, obviously there are little pieces within the big piece, but it's all one big piece in the sense that you're expected to backtrack and min-max all of your items and all these pickups, for example. Okay, so that's just sort of a little gotcha to ensure that you're paying attention as far as I can tell, because you don't want to be attacking anything when that's about to hit. Okay, quick save, because we still have five minutes again. Hopefully that's, if there is a boss, that's not going to come into effect. Okay, I don't see a matriarch, so we're just gonna get in here with my hero. Okay, so that's all four caves. We sealed all their exits, but we still have a long walk ahead of us. That's not that long. It's not that long, unless the map's gonna expand, and maybe it will. We'll find out. Okay, use your shield recharge. Science facility. Researcher and protoss scientists created the facility as a place where they could observe the Ursodons closely. When the threat of the Overmind on the rise, when they were recalled back to their homeworld, and the place was abandoned since. When the Purifier War started, the place was reopened and was used by the Alliance Command Council as a safe place to house refugees. After the war, the place is reopened as a science facility once again. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Still a little sad about my votary dying, but that's all right. We'll do our best without him. It is my honor. Another matriarch. Niraz Gulio. I think maybe what we're going to want to do is void stasis it and then kill as many of the other ones as possible. Yes. We can kill, kill all these other ones quite easily. And... That's fine. We turn this off again. Curious to see how my hero's gonna hold up against it. Not bad. Not bad. So let's backtrack and you can pick up the health. You require counsel. What is your will? Quick save. Two and a half ish minutes to the snowstorm. Okay. 
Okay. And turrets. Okay, these are these are friends. These are these are friendly turrets. There is little time. Okay, we can walk through that. Stop right there. Planet IC3, B3, R6, earlier that day. Guard the base while I'm gone, NS9. Don't take too long. Deltron and Jay Barino live stream co op in 30 minutes. <laughs> it's me and Deltron. Gotta catch that live stream, dog. What game are they playing? The Hammer of Dawn Revamp. Oh, I love that game. I won't be long. Keep the tea warm for me. Will do, brother. Beep boop warp. Thanks for the shout out. I appreciate it. Okay, so now we've got Bay R. Former warrior of the Taldarim, volunteered to join the ranks of the Eradicator during the War of the Purifiers. Not much is known about Bayar's past, and Bayar likes to keep it that way. Bayar's partner and advisor. Artificial frame programmed with advanced AI, created during the War of the Purifiers. Okay, zero shift. We are of one mind. Boop. Boop. Okay, pretty much an instant march. blink. Let Minus the very us. brief turn speed. Eradication. Self-repair. I think you have to channel that if I remember. Yeah. Move or attack until or five seconds have passed. Greatly improves shield regeneration rate. It shall be done. Okay. Forward. Ewoks. I can't it won't let me blink down there, but we can see some Ewoks down there. See the map did expand. There's there's more to it. You are here. Does that mean you accept my challenge? We don't have to do this, Alexi. For years, we fought side by side. We destroyed the Purifier's Titans and Weapons Factories. You are strong. There's no need to prove yourself. We infested Terrans. We have always been outcasts. To the Terrans, we are abominations. Gruesome monsters. To the Zerg, we are merely biomass. Food. I have a dream. A unified infested Terran. A planet of our own. Free from the Terran, free from the Zerg. A place I could call home. I need to know if I'm strong enough. I need to know if I could protect my dream. You need to know if you could kill me, should the ACC send me to kill you. Tepid pause. I see. Your dream, huh? Come then, Alexei. Show me your power. Kill me if you can.
Okay, so we have a boss fight with Alexei Stukov because he wants to test himself. Alright. Bring it on, buddy. I thought we were friends. This whole purifier fiasco brought us all together, but now you're just a jerk. Alright, save. First thing we're gonna do, blast him with, uh... I mean, we can't really... Well, let's see. Uh... Oh, well, I didn't mean to do that. Just keep using purification on him. I don't think there's I don't think there's a way that I can avoid. Okay, those just die. So, we just want to avoid those. When he's invisible, we can use self-repair. Just just get out of that. Uh, see what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? It's tough. It's tough finding the right way to do these things. But uh, it usually comes down to the very, very... It's like the very end. The thin the thin wire at the end is, how the, is what this comes down to. So I think we just want to use zero shift to blink out of infested Terran clumps that we get put in. And just use Disintegration. See, we just blink away from these. They're pretty fast. Uh, we can actually... It looks like we can... Oh, I didn't want to pick that up. It looks like we might be able to dodge damage if we're very careful. I, picking up that health really is going to be a problem in the grand scheme here. Okay, so I'm going to nano repair. Pretty much out of energy. Zero shift doesn't cost anything, so that's... Again, I, I can't tell if I can dodge his attacks or not. I don't think I can. No, I, I dodged that. It's it's hard to avoid any damage from that, but I dodged the damage from it. Well, not that. Not that Q. Holy shit. I feel like I've done... I, I He's he's like a... He's, he's not even down to 25% health and he's killing... I mean, I picked up that... I picked up the, the pickup when I shouldn't have. That was a big issue. I think I yeah this this works. Oh yeah. Okay. I found I'm not sure. I think I'm going to assume that this is the intended way to do this. Don't pick that up. Mm. I'm a dummy. You gotta be real precise with it, too. I think, again, because I picked up that health, I'm screwed. The infested Terrans are the hardest part, honestly. It's interesting that that projectile is dodgeable at all. You wouldn't think that it would be, but it somehow is. Like, it shouldn't be. 
Again, you wouldn't imagine that it should be, is what I mean. That Q that he does is absolutely killer. Fuck. Fuck. Okay. It's like you gotta get into the rhythm. Ugh. It's intense. Again, because you have to be very pristine. Like, very precise. Oh, we dodged the Q! That's huge! That's huge! I gotta. I would rather save up to heal myself again. <sighs> oh gosh! Oh gosh! Again, I, you really wouldn't expect that this is it's a dodgeable attack, but it is. Ah, the Q, man. Stop! He's a coward. He's a coward. Oh. You're as fierce as ever, Bayar. You should be proud, Alexei. Not many can push me around like that. To glory. But not enough for you to initiate your eradicator mode. So what now? Now we bid our fa farewell. We part ways. Next time we meet, I'll be much stronger. Next time we meet, I will be king. Until we meet again, Alexei. You really don't think it would be a good idea to just murder him now? He's clearly gonna come back with a vengeance. What are you doing out here, NS9? We have guests. Really? I wasn't expecting anyone. Is it Sin R and Mother? Come and see for yourself. Hello, Bay R. Ellen Nara, the adopted daughter of former High Lord Janara? What are you doing here? I see you've heard of me. Tell me, do you know what happened to my mother? Just the same ground details everyone already knows. Humor me. On the second year of the war, the purifiers attacked the Taljarim homeworld.
Hylogenera used her mothership as bait to lure the purifiers. To stall them long enough until the Ascendant's reinforcements arrive. But her ship was destroyed before the Ascendants could reach her. The combined might of the the combined might of the ascendants defeated the invaders. The Tadrim homeworld was saved. Later, Jannar was buried with the highest of honors. Do you mind if we speak privately? Tepid pause. That was a lie. Ruwaka com commanded the other ascendants not to come to her aid. Vengeance! to wait until her death is confirmed before they retaliate. With her death, Ruwaka ascended the throne. Becoming High Lord of the Tal'Darim. That's a very serious accusation. You have proof? I was there. I witnessed everything. What they did, disobeying a direct order. I mean, this is the Tal Jareem. I don't know what you expected. And ignoring call and ignoring a call to arms from the High Lord. That was treason. Treason of the highest order. Punishable by death. But the Tal'Darim law stated that crime with such high magnitude... ...can only be judged by the High Lord. Imagine that. A crime of treason punishable by death committed by the High Lord. Which the judge and the jury is also the High Lord. What do you think the outcome would be? Why me? Why come for me? Mother told me. Should I need help, I should come to you. That you would help, no matter what. <clears throat> what is it that you want me to do? What is it that you seek? What I want, what I seek, that's what we asked. Isn't it obvious? Vengeance. I see. I see. I will go with you, but first there is one thing I need to do. Places I need to be. Whatever you need. 
Make no mistake, I'm not doing this for vengeance. I'm doing this for justice. Justice for Janara. Of course, justice. Justice the Taldarim way. Except we're green now. Well, already, that's the prologue. I do feel like the... The cutscenes all seem a little stretched. Like the... The dialogue and then the, the time between each dialogue is like two to two and a half times longer than it necessarily needs to be. And that might just be because, I guess if I was making a campaign not in my native language, I would I really wouldn't know how long they should be either. Or maybe it's purpose for that way for effect, I'm not sure. I'm just saying, from my perspective, it feels it feels a little too long. But that's also because we were playing, you know, the, the prologue, so it's supposed to be, I guess, uh, narrative heavy. Uh, and as usual, Edriano coming in with some solid boss fights. They take, you know, a try, at, at least one try. Uh, usually having to reload. Some of them I remember in the past, like back in like original Hammer of Dawn, for example, like getting really frustrated with some of those. But that's because they're they're designed again very precisely. You have a certain amount of energy to use. There are pickups on the ground. You got to use them, and you have to dodge almost every enemy attack. And there's also some unavoidable damage that's usually in there mixed in as well. So it's it's pretty tough. Uh, I'd be curious if Adriano would share their their uh, design philosophy around the bosses because again it's actually really interesting to me again how precise they tend to be uh and you know needing a certain amount of they're like uh their pickups like limited pickups on some missions where like you need to bring a certain amount into the boss else you just got to restart the level but you really won't know that until you lose to the boss enough times so like i would I, i'm not keen on saying like oh it's like dark souls because i think that's like a lazy way to not actually explain what you're trying to say but we could talk about it more as we make our way through this campaign. And also, you know, it's very generous to compare something to Dark Souls. And Dark Souls is not a genre, it's just one game. Um, but in, in the sense of it, it, this, these missions and these, all of these encounters expect you to probably have to try them until you f can figure out the correct way, like the just right way to, to, to get it right, to, to nail it. And that's, uh, that's how the bosses function, and at least we can use quick saves. Uh, again, kind of circling back to what I said earlier, uh, very similar to Adriano's other campaigns, Hammer of Dawn, and then the other two noir campaigns, where there there is subject matter included in like the StarCraft universe that it feels a little out of place. Uh, again, that's just my personal preference, where some of the characters they don't seem like they would act how I would expect them to in the StarCraft universe. Again, we've got like Protoss romance drama, sort of, I guess, uh, and. And Protoss kids, uh, and and a lot of references to other intellectual property. So again, that's why it probably doesn't feel completely like StarCraft. So that's all fine. Again, it just depends on your personal preference, and if you're interested in the source material, a lot of it I think is anime as well. Um, but the one thing that I do think stands out that I would recommend maybe figuring out a way to change in terms of the dialogue is Janara is characterized in the original game like her the source material as being hard-headed and just sort of dumb. And actually, I think it's kind of implied that she dies at the end of the the eighth mission of Nova Covert Ops. Like, she was on that last mothership and gets blown up. I don't know if that's confirmed, but I, it kind of seemed like that it, just when playing the mission. Regardless, now she's, it seems like she's cold and calculating and uh, is sneaking around and uh, seems very adept at, at fighting with her, with her cool spear and such. Uh... I guess this is more of a characterization, like, you're, you, this is adding more personality to a character that really didn't have much at all, besides being sort of a dumb antagonist from Nova Covert Ops. So from that perspective, I guess it's fine. But I just want to say that, you know, seeing Malash and Janara act in ways that you wouldn't expect them to based on the limited characterization that we have from the source material. 
So I don't know. Uh, I don't know what can really be done about that. I mean, you could just make new characters, and that way you can have them act exactly how you want them to be, as opposed to changing existing characters to behave in ways that maybe are not what you would expect. In any case, we'll see what is going to be coming moving forward. I mean, Jannara, we know, is just going to die. <laughs> anyway, so that's in line with her character, I suppose. She's going to lose in Rakshir at some point. Uh, but interesting, and I'm looking forward to seeing what the, the future combat encounters hold for us. All right, thanks, Adriano, and we'll see everyone next time. Bye-bye.